writes, Kate asked you at Yellow Dog Press, and we're going to print coasters today. I have some three and a half inch coasters here. Um, that's about a little over 21 pikas, and I'm going to do two lines, and I've decided that 15 pikas is about as long as it needs to be so, to still give me some space around the edges. So I'm going to go with 15 pikas. So I have placed a 15 pika slug in my composing stick here and I am going to set some type. I've got my composing stick already, with my 15 pika slug and my composing stick that's set on 15 pikas. And now I'm gonna start putting my letters in. You'll notice that my thumb is right here, sort of near the knee, and I'll always sort of have it hovering around my letters to keep them stable. So I'm spelling love. I'm using a 30 point post monotone that's an ATF uh, foundry type cast in 1903. Most foundry cast type will have a nick like this, which is nice because when you're setting your type, you can look at a line and make sure all your nicks are going in the right way and you know everything's where it should be, at least which way it should be facing. I'm not talking about spelling. So here's L, and then we go with O, V, and E. A uh, fun thing in this post monotone is that there are two E's. There's an alternate E where the low bar of the E is longer in one point and I'm going to use that longer version, which is called a terminal E, because I think it'll be fun. So I'm gonna put that E back, because I'm using this longer bar E, and now I need to justify my line. This particular case is very convenient because it has the spacing material in the case. And if yours doesn't come like that, it'd be nice to go ahead and set it up that way, which I do with the ones I frequently use because it makes it a lot faster. So if you're gonna justify your line, you want even amounts of spacing on either side. So I'm working with 30 point type. I'm looking at 30 point spacing. And in this case, I can get a 30 point M quad on either side. And also I can get a 4M space on either side. And I can also get thin spaces on either side, which is coming out kind of well. And I'm gonna try to get two Brasses, I've got my brasses up here, and they're slippery little suckers. And um, so I can't get two. Well, I can get two. You want it to be snug. You don't want it to be so tight you can't move it, but you do want it to be slug. I think I'm gonna just do one. And then if you push the line out like this, you can see you can see that it's snug and it stands on its own. So then I'm gonna go over here and grab another 15 pike of slug. And I'm going to drop it right here. And you can see when I've got my thumb on top of that, I can walk around the shop and move it and it's not falling apart, which is why you always want to be gripping your composing stick like this. So now I'm going to build out the second line and then we'll go over to the press. Now I'm at my imposing table, this flat steel table where I'm going to set my type. You want something super flat. Um, so all of your type is the same height. You want all your type to be the same height when it hits the paper. Standard type size is 0 0.918. 0 0.918 of an inch is type height. So I'm going to pinch my fingers together like this and push out the type, pinching the two slugs I have on either side and with my knuckles kind of there on the sides to keep it from moving about. So you can see I can move this as long as I pinch and push like that. I think I want this about right here. I'm gonna build it out into a rectangle, and then I'll build my whole form four ways, this way, this way, and out to the sides. I'm gonna use two coins when I do this. Coins are these high speed coins like that, and they lock going inward. You always want this inside part to hit a piece of wood, not metal. So I want it to hit my wood furniture. So I've got my two coins in place. I've got one up at the top as I'm looking at it and one to my right. And then I'm gonna start building out my form. You'll see that I'm starting with smaller pieces of furniture and building out to larger pieces. This helps give a balance to my form. And I start with shorter, pieces and move out to the longer pieces. And I do the same thing on the sides. I'm gonna build out the side here. 
using my furniture, my wood furniture, and all right, so I've got my furniture built. Now what I need to do is use a plane to plane the furniture. And let me grab that real fast. Here's my planer. You can see it has a flat surface. You always want to store your planer on its edge so you don't get any um, grit on the bottom that can hurt your type when you then plane it. So I'm going to pick up my planer and I'm going to give it a good whack to make sure all my type is level on this imposing stone. So we're gonna tighten the key a little bit here, a little bit there. You don't wanna break your form, but you do need to get it really tight because this is what keeps your form from falling apart at the press. So now I'm gonna take my key and I'm going to lift up this corner and slide the key under the corner like that and I'm gonna press on my letters to see if anything moves. It does not, which means I have a good lockup, so that's great. So once again, I'm going to loosen it up. Since I poked on it a little bit, I always like to loosen it up, give it another good whack, and then tighten it back. So that is how you build out a form. Using a chase, your furniture, these coins and your coin key and your planer. And now we'll go to the press. Let's talk a little bit about getting prepared to put our form in. First of all, you'll uh, see how I have the rollers in the middle of the press there. When I'm not using the press, I have the rollers right here in the middle. I don't want them up on the plate because they'll get flat spots. And likewise, I don't want them weighted at the bottom because they'll get flat. And if you have flat spots on your rollers, you're really sunk. You're not gonna be able to print well. You can see when it's at rest, there's a big gap here because I never store a, over a form. Always take your form out. So this helps keep your rollers very smooth. Now let's talk about tempin. I've just put a fresh piece of tempin in. I cut a fresh piece of this oily, waxy press work paper where you can put gauge pins in and they're, they don't slip or they're not supposed to anyway. This was my old piece of tempin that's a little beat up. You can use them over and over again, but they'll start fighting you after a while and you think, why am I not putting on a fresh piece? So today I've got a fresh piece for this project and I've got it tamped down with these bales and the bottom was already secure and I'm going to pull really tight here, make sure it's really tight and then push that bale down. Now, as far as packing goes, right now I have two pieces of chipboard in there. I'm gonna have to really think about it before I put that thick coaster on because I don't want to smash my type. But I've got to take an impression. I'm gonna put the form in, um, I'm gonna ink up the press, and then I'll put the form in, and then I'll take an impression of the form on the tempin, and that way I can place my gauge pins and I know where to put my coaster. So I'll be right back with that. I've got a little ink on the press and I really do mean just a little. You can over ink your platen very easily and it's better to start out with less than what you think you need because it's easy to over ink. So I'm gonna start my press, get this ball rolling here. I've got a nice kind of fireball red on the press and um, I didn't mix it this time. I'm just gonna take it straight from the can for my Love Boldly coaster. I love this fireball and I use it a lot. So I crank it way up to get it inked. And while I'm making up my press is when I usually will go ahead and get whatever I'm printing, which today are these coasters. Put them on my feed board, get everything ready to go. My form is in and I'm not gonna actually turn it on, I'm just gonna turn the wheel here and get an impression. Right now you can see this lever is back, which means my press is off impression. I'm just inking up the form so it won't make an impression on the tympan. And I might not even have enough packing in there to make the impression I want, but I'm gonna give it another go around 
pull my impression lever. Let's see what I got here. Yeah, there's not enough impression. So I'm going to slip another piece of chipboard in there. See if I can do it without do undoing my bail. And I can. So slip another one in there. And give it another go. This is just to get the impression on the 10 pins so we can put in our gauge pins. And then I'll have to fine tune it because, as I said before, I don't want to smash my type. So there we have, that's what it's going to look like. And I am now going to figure out where the gauge pin goes. And I do that by putting a coaster over the form about where I want it and placing a couple of marks and cutting little slits and putting my pins in. So I'm going to do that. When you're figuring out where to place your piece of paper, or in this case, my coaster, one thing I've found that helps me out is if I find the midpoint of my form and I draw lines extended out. If I have a piece of paper, I'll fold that paper in quarters and then I know exactly where to put each point and that helps me. With the coaster, the little trick I've found is to make these extended lines and then do the same thing on my coaster and I'll line them up and then I made a circle around it. So it's not exact, but in the end it works out well. So I've got one of my gauge pins here and then I've got one more gauge pin that I'm gonna put right here. And that's really all I need. I just need two really for this project. And I slit my coaster in there like that and I should get a good impression here. Now, I'm a little worried that with this coaster, I'm gonna smash my type. So I'm gonna start out by taking an, yet another piece of chipboard out that I used to kind of get an idea. And because I did that, what I really need to do is tighten my tinting paper. And see if I can get this to print. I'll probably have to build it back up but you want to work with caution, especially when you're working with antique type, like I'm working with. This type I have is pretty rare, and I would rather work really hard to build up than smash my type. Okay, well, that looks pretty good. Um, you can see there's a little crackling around the edges, so I, I still have too much impression. I'm going to back off this last piece of chipboard and just put in some couple pounds of a couple pieces of 100 and 110 pound paper and I'll come back and show you how it looks. I also need more ink. So we'll do that next. I put a few pieces of lightweight paper underneath the coaster to get the proper impression and I put some more ink on the platen and when I pulled this print I really liked how it looked. I had to move the gauge pins a little bit to get it centered properly and then when I was examining this I noticed that this Y is damaged. It's missing part of its serif. So I'm going to take the form out and replace that Y before I let it roll. I'm going to clean the form, clean off my type before I switch out the Y's and when I pull this off I can see, yeah. I, if I had looked at it closer when I was setting the type, I would have noticed that. Now, because this type is so rare and I only have four Ys anyway, I'm going to save this and I'll make a note that it's damaged. But there may come a time when I have to use it and I don't really care. But you can see that it does indeed have a flaw. I'm going to slip this Y where the other one was put my spacing material back in make sure it's flat tighten it up and I'm gonna go through the same thing again that I did before every time you lock up your form you have to go through the same process and it should become second nature to glance to make sure everything so like I'm looking here and I really want that to be a little more centered, so I need to pay attention to what I'm doing, perhaps, and not talk so much, but I'm getting 
everything centered, making sure it's lined up right. Slip the key into the corner. Press, yep, it's tight. And we're ready to go. After I lock up my form and get it good and tight, and I've checked by putting the key under the corner, I always pick it up like this and check the back. I wanna make sure there's nothing on the back of this form. That's a very important part of checking your form because it could interfere with your impression. It could even damage your type or your press. So always kind of make sure everything's even, there's nothing stuck to the back before you get going. I've printed quite a few coasters already and I like the way they turned out. They turned out how I planned, which is always nice. I've kept a constant monitor on the amount of ink to make sure the ink is right. These coasters soak up a lot of ink, so I've had to stop and re-ink. And I've laid them out on top of each other, kind of floating. They won't offset if you do it that way. They kind of float on top of one another. And this is just a reminder that I don't film and print at the same time because it's a good way to get your hand taken off. I also don't talk while I'm printing because that's a dangerous too. When I was learning to print, if my teacher caught you while you were printing at the press, he would unplug your machine. And it would be a minute before you got to plug it back in. It was really embarrassing, especially as an adult, to have that happen. But it's all about safety. And these things can take a finger off or a hand off in a second if you're not paying attention all the time. So here's our finished product. I ended up printing on both sides and I really liked the way it turned out. So thank you for joining us at Yellow Dog Press to see how we make letterpress coasters. And now it's time to close down the shop. Bye.